In this video, we'll look at the Very Good Food Company and give highlights and my commentary on their Q2 2021 results that just came out. So let's dive into it. If you're new here as well, welcome to the channel, The Paper Bag Investor, where we're always looking for the next multi-bagger investment for your portfolio. Trying to find these um, high conviction companies that you can look from many angles and have great certainty or at least a, a really uh, high degree of confidence is going to be a great investment over time. Uh, so that's my investing strategy in a nutshell. And if you think you would enjoy that as well, you're probably going to enjoy my channel and my content. So if you get value out of this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and do me a favor as well. Please, please, please hit that thumbs up, smash the like button if you enjoy this video okay and and remember i want to mention as well stick around to the end of the video to see my plans for very the stock vryyf uh and what i what i'm at least doing with the stock right now not investing advice for you but at least what i'm doing okay let's dive into it very good foods and it's listed vryyf you can find it in us dollars or very.v sometimes it's very.vn or .v something else uh, and you're depending on your broker and that would be in canadian dollars through canadian exchange so their q2 2020 reads 2021 results let's jump into it and i just want to show this uh their market cap just so we keep this in our back pocket is about a 300 million dollars right now this is canadian dollars so again Again, the very.v is Canadian. If you had the VRYYF, you'd find this in US dollars, but about $300 million is the market cap right now, uh, sitting at about just under $3 per share uh, Canadian. And uh, now financial highlights, we'll just look at, at some of these numbers that just came out for June. So this is for the end of June 2021, Q2. And nothing too surprising here because really this is a company that's been uh production constrained heavily production constrained and trying and and it's making some major investments right now as we speak into made new facilities that are going to going to have have a huge production ramp ahead of them so but this last quarter in q2 not a whole lot a little bit more of sales in the e-commerce a little more wholesale sales uh sales overall uh you know up a little bit quarter since the previous quarter but not a huge amount significant since the year before but still uh, you know really not anything to write home about when you're talking you know maybe 10 million dollars in sales and the company's 300 million so it's something but not really significant really uh we're looking ahead still the next few quarters uh, but, but, but had some major losses about 12 million dollars in losses we're going to break down some of those losses or review those and but again not as bad as the quarter before and compared to other well, the year before not nearly as bad but uh, these are really fluctuating these losses and i want to point out too if you look at they made 2.7 million dollars in sales and they have about an average sales price of about seven dollars per pound these are again canadian dollars canadian canadian i'm working with here so that works out too and you do that on an annualized basis four quarters that works out to about one and a half million pounds of product uh, average sort of production um for the last quarter at an annualized basis and that's kind of where we'll see where they're at but this 1.5 million pounds is going to scale to the tens of millions uh, of pounds in the coming quarters so very exciting stuff ahead really for this company okay so rupert facility here's an update um, we're going to walk through a bunch of updates on their facilities rupert facility is their major facility it's going to be in in vancouver and as we're saying, they're doing about 1.5 million pounds out of a Victoria facility mostly right now. But this facility, when fully scaled out, is going to do up to 37 million pounds itself. And phased uh, of annual product, product be phased in this year. Uh, they took possession of that in January of this year. They started doing testing, I think, in the spring and are starting to actually have saleable product right now. Okay, and oh yes, yeah, so it gives it a little more detail there. So they're going to have two lines on this Rupert facility one's gonna line one which they're scaling out right now uh, is they're going to do kind of their standard their classic product lineup of, of very good burger British bangers pepperoni smoking burger smoking banger very good dog very good steak so all these kind of more classic uh, SKUs SKU is like a unique product barcode um, 
these different these seven different products are going to be what's produced on line one and they are doing saleable product now <clears throat> and it has in limited quantities in q2 over the course of the next few months the production team will continue to ramp up the production from line one he'll be targeting 40 to 7 or sorry, 40,000 pounds per day on average in Q4. So huge ramp up, 40,000 pounds per day. And then from there, also gradually increasing to 60,000 pounds per day in early Q1 2022. Additional capacity will support the increasing demand for their products and who have an average sales price. So this is key information as well. $14 Canadian uh, in e-commerce and $7 per pound wholesale. So I'm really just working with wholesale numbers here, uh, but it could be... Um, as well uh you know they, they actually sell it for a higher amount uh more revenue uh when it's done through e-commerce so 14 and 7 and but about 40,000 and 60,000 huge ramp and then also they're gonna have like this the line two is gonna be commissioned in q4 of this year is their plan approved food production starting in the first quarter of next year and they're gonna have six other skus produced from there some of their gluten-free soy-free um, brands that will be coming out of there and they have they make some notes about COVID-19 pandemic on the Rupert which is in the Vancouver facility we're talking about and the Patterson facility which is in California which we'll touch on here as well but uh, they have experienced hiring delays and um, because of COVID and some even uh, restrictions about equipment being shipped there soon enough so has affected them as they're trying to you know ramp up a major production ramp up and i want to point out a little bit of math here like the the q4 so if they ramp up production at the rupert facility forty thousand pounds per day in q4 2020 equals at if you do seven dollars uh say they sell every pound they produce which at this point i think they're going to be selling mostly every pound they're producing but if they do uh and they do forty thousand pounds a day at an annualized rate that's about a hundred million dollars canadian and we had a you know three hundred million dollar market cap right now which gives a price to sales like a forward price to sales of three uh very very good uh very very low it's not going to stay at three i don't think it's not going to stay it's not going to just sit there at three the the mark if they sell it or selling 100 million the price is going to be much higher than 300 million for the whole company and then 60,000 pounds per day in q uh, uh q4 uh, sorry this is a typo here that should say q1 i'm going to change that right now here uh q1 2021 jump back in here it is 153 million so price of sales of two and then full scale it would be if they really scale that out 37 million pounds per year is like 259 million pounds 250 260 million dollars canadian about a price of sales of 1.2 for reference right now beyond meat uh, has a price to sales of about 16 so you gotta wonder you know if they were even given a price to sales of 10 which to, to me might be more realistic for a company like uh, very good foods at that point uh, and it could be higher than 10 they might get a price to sales of 20 really but if it's a 10 you know then this is going to be like they could have a you know somewhere in here in the next year that could mean that the stock's in a triple or it could even be like a 5x or even be closer to like 8, 9, 10x in the next year in a bit. Um, certainly possible in this scenario. The stock, you know, might be like a $3 billion Canadian company. Definitely not impossible if they're annualized, doing sort of annualized scales uh, at this kind of a rate. So, definitely a huge potential head for the stock that's why they're only selling a few million you know 10 million right now maybe an annualized rate but they're selling for 300 million so it's like a 30 price to sales right now uh, okay so let's keep going on patterson facility is their facility in california it's it's located at the same place where they have a lot of logistics providers so that's great and this facility is going to be staggered behind the rupert one and they're doing up to up to 90 8 million pounds of product per year three to four production lines so they probably this depend how uh sales are going and how things are are are, um, are working out over time how if they're going to fully scale with you know three three lines or four lines of i'm sure they'll decide that but um <clears throat> and the, this i put in red here just because i noted this uh in another video or on twitter and uh they said food production will be launched in september on commercial grade kitchen equipment in order to fast track the production of the taco stuffers taco stuffer is one of their uh, main product items but really this is non you know if you think about people like 
people doing uh, just commercial grade kitchen like it's probably just a few staff at this facility are kind of already on the payroll and so they're learning to make this product and make it and make a saleable product why not and they're selling it but really um, not you know going to move the needle when you're talking about the actual facility it is supposed to, it's supposed to be you know taco stuffers are going to be fully through line one and supposed to do 27 million pounds per year like what somebody or a few people in a kitchen can do versus 27 million is completely inconsequential so um really not a big deal what they're talking about there this next you know september start is kind of meaningless in my opinion okay developing innovative products very good recently announced new gluten-free soy free butcher select product lineup uh so this was also in their investor presentation i did a video on just recently uh but yeah gluten-free soy free product and it you know helps extend the customer base they estimated 30 percent of americans who avoid gluten that's a lot of americans really who avoid gluten but i, I do know a lot of people as a Canadian who do avoid gluten for various reasons uh, so that's interesting that they have those lineups as well and they have the other products they're um, rolling out as well cheese uh, based products these, these are kind of just a bunch of further products to complement their brand and the product selection they're offering to people that are eating vegan or aren't trying to eat less meat or care about the environment or all of the above so that's great as well and then they're expanding their wholesale distribution so this is great as well uh they started um, a number of strategic partnerships with uh someone called the green spoon uh one called unfi one called kihi i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right kihi distributors and these ones have really these all these distributors have major grocers including Harmon grocers blah 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 sprouts farmers market whole foods thrive market associated food stores a bunch of uh, major grocery stores um throughout the u.s and uh during the second quarter uh very continued to coast it also continued to expand in Canada through new wholesale distribution partners. And uh, overall, 20 uh, by this month, I guess right now, it has 754 stores across North America and about a more than 100 plus in the U.S. that they carry very good suite of products. So I'm assuming the number of U.S. stores is going to rapidly expand or hope and hope to expand. And they say that down here expect me to be on the shelves. We expect to be on the shelves of many more stores by the end of the year, but more so in the first quarter of 2022 after major retails, retailers fall 2021 product category review periods. Retailers have set periods in their annual, annual calendars called product category review periods where new entrants into the store are considered. Food suppliers such as Very Good present their innovative products along samples, uh, marketing materials, and suggested pricing have their SKU selected to the retailers. For major retailers, the next product category review period is the fall for entry into their shelves in Q1 2022. So this is a really big deal. Uh, I've said I've said before in other videos. Right now, the two main risks for this company is execution as they scale up their production, and then the next risk is do stores accept their products at scale, really, and do the customers and customers buy their products and enjoy their products? Uh, I think they're going to. Uh, it's definitely been heavily production constrained, and I think as their products are available more places and more people want to eat this kind of a diet people are going to be trying these and couldn't be enjoying these foods so uh this is going to be really important though as they you know i'm sure have very important meetings coming up in these in this fall as they present to major uh, yeah uh, retailers throughout especially throughout the u.s to present their products and make their pitch of why they need to be carrying their products so uh definitely uh a key key thing that's coming up okay and this is kind of interesting as well this is from their um <clears throat> uh their annual report of of the 2020 annual report so uh built to i don't know if i'm saying his last name right a past whole foods market and amazon executive was appointed very good board of directors so the, i mean i put through this in here because he could be a key reason why i i would imagine like some of these like they're partnering with whole foods here and other like some of these a lot of these others are more natural grocers through the u.s and chains so this could be a key guy that they did bring in and he actually has been involved with very since their initial public off offering so um, has been connected to the company but actually came on the board of directors in december of last year i'm sure he has a, a lot of relationships key relationships that this guy 
is bringing to help uh, uh, get the correct and large um, distribution network that they need to sell <laughs> tens of millions of pounds of products. Okay, then moving on through the report, what else can we uh, touch on as highlights here? The company launched its Amazon U.S. storefront, so they're continuing to launch e-commerce sales, which they get, again, uh, higher uh, higher revenue from. So they have an, e an Amazon U.S. storefront where they're selling some of their, their main products out of. And then they're also, <clears throat> that was in June, and then August, they launched a UK e-commerce website. So UK customers uh, can also order online through that site. It's a little more financial uh, numbers here. We'll look at this as well. So um, it's good. Their gross profits have been around 24, 22%, 36%, 23%, 20%. Um, you're looking off a few different scales here. Three months, three months, three months. And price last year was, was a little bit higher, or at least those three months. Uh, well, these were actually lower, the six months end of June 30th. So it's been in that 20 to 30% range. Gross margin pretty consistent. I'm sure it depends partly on the products mix that they're selling and each product line's gross margin. But that's pretty solid uh, gross margin. Expenses, as I mentioned, were large. We're going to walk through those in a little more detail here right away. Um, yeah, and we'll keep jumping along here. <clears throat> so some of their expenses, their procurement expense, which includes cost of raw materials, supplies, and Inventory packaging, inbound shipping, charges, employee wage benefits uh, blah, blah, uh, occurred in the procurement and manufacturing of the company's finished goods. So that's what this is. I'm going to look at the three months of this quarter compared to the year prior, up 200%. This is increased sales. Um, this is primarily driven by increased sales and the company ramping up production. That's kind of the answer for most of these major expenses ramping up is, guess what? They're preparing for the company to go from million you know, million pounds of product sales a year to tens of millions of pounds to 30, 40, 50, and eventually it could be like 100 million pounds, or at least of production and hopefully sales. Uh, so a huge scaling up that's happening. Fulfillment expense uh, is sort of third party costs are picking and packing inventory into orders uh, and it, this was up you know, 300% from 1.6 to 2 million dollars again wrap of production significantly higher e-commerce wholesale orders general administration <clears throat> this is uh, just sort of all your administration on to expenses on top of um, your manufacturing expenses so aside from those it includes your management accounting legal uh, etc this was up a lot uh, up 800% uh, Increased six million over, increased to six point eight million uh, from it would have been you know six seven hundred thousand or whatever it was before, so a huge increase compared to the year prior or seven hundred compared to seven hundred twenty three thousand year prior, and this was mainly cost ba or share based compensation which was four point three million. So obviously, and I know um, a lot of uh, so their executive team that they're bringing in they are compensating with uh, major uh, amounts of shares. So. That's a <clears throat> major expense, but um, the, get the right people in place who have the right connections, who can make the right partnerships that you need. Uh, it's probably a risk you need to take as you try and make a little company like this go from farmer market level to big shot, um, you know, worldwide uh, producer seller of a product. So, so that's that. And then marketing and investor related expense, uh, digital marketing initiative was up as well, mainly due to increase in digital marketing initiatives to raise awareness and increase e-commerce traffic and conversion. So they're obviously um, ramping up, increasing the amount of e-commerce they are doing and testing that. And that was up 248 <clears throat> percent excuse me uh to 2.5 million versus 740 the year before so lots of expenses really shooting up pre-production expense is sort of how their um their expenses related to commissioning their facilities so they have a number of facilities the rupert one is the main one we're talking about but also the patterson one, one is coming in california and they also have a few you know like flagship store like a storefront in victoria uh, and that was up, you know, that jumped up versus basically nothing as a company did not take possession of the Rupert facility until January this year. So that kind of concludes my highlights uh, from the investor letter for this quarter. Uh, but I want to leave you with a little more, a few more details here. And that is, uh, again, this slide that they, if they do, this is really what we're looking for here. If they get to 40,000 40, pounds a day, you're talking 100 million in sales. 
and like the stock on uh, could potentially 3x or more by then if it's if they reach 60,000 pounds a day in Q4 and they're doing like 150 million in sales uh, like the stock could potentially do like a 5x if they have a price to sales of, of 10 again if they're like a 9 to 10 price to sales and if they fully scale up the uh this is the the rupert facility in vancouver then you're talking like you know 200 and some million in sales and you know it could be like eight nine ten x and then of course there's the patterson facility on top of that in california which will be ramping up as well so there's, there's huge huge um huge possibilities ahead for this company and again beyond meat only has a price to sales of or has a price to sales of 16 so i'm trying to estimate like a 10 and sort of see where that could lie and then of course this 37 million again it is only the rupert facility fully uh fully functioning not the patterson which is could, could even do significantly more product beyond that if the products are really accepted at scale really accepted at the market level so conclusions for all this um and what i'm doing with the stock conclusions are i think it was a fine quarter uh nothing really surprising we i'm filming this before the earnings call so we might hear some more from the earnings call i will review that uh, and let you know if there's anything really interesting there but um fine quarter good quarter and really though we're still waiting for q3 and q4 uh of this year that's that's really where the rubber hits the road and we see if they can truly ramp production or not and then if they can ramp production we'll see if sales match and they can distribute and sell most of the product they make and that will be sort of really the next even big more significant hurdle uh is is the market really accept their products at a wide scale are they um really loved and accepted and been eagerly bought um or are they not? And these are the two key risks that they're facing. Can they execute and can they ramp production? And will the market accept this product at scale? I believe they're going to do it. And I believe the level of success, uh, if they can, uh, could be like a 3 to 5x or even more in the next 12 to 18 months. But time, uh, time will obviously tell to see how it pans out. But I do kind of see this as an asymmetric risk. There's some downside risk, like, you know, the stock could literally drop in half, go from 300 million to 150 million or something if things don't go well, or there's like maybe not as accepted well at scale, maybe at some level of success, but not as much as they thought. So there is some downside risk, a possibility. But if you tried to plot the sort of potential upside, to me, those upsides are much bigger and are probably more probable. So if you tried to plot a graph of sort of a probabilistic distribution of, of the possible outcomes, then you maybe you have the worst outcomes over here. Like it's going to be like a shorter, you know, it's going to be a slower, lower curve with less probability and less sort of actual outcomes over there. And then more probability, more probable outcomes are over here and there's a like much higher degree or scale of those you know maybe it's a 3x 5x 6x 10x kind of range over here that's why i think it's really sort of an asymmet asymmetrical uh, risk reward uh, sort of position that the stock is in right now and that's why what am i doing i am accumulating shares i'm not accumulating a ton because it, there is still risks over there uh but i am accumulating uh, more than i own i'll say that so i'll be continuing to buy and continuing to watch especially in the next couple quarters if you got value out of this video uh make sure to subscribe hit that subscribe button down below hit that like button it really helps me out you can also find me on twitter at paperbaginvest and i want you to remember it's in the bag. Cheers.